welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss a topic that you'll see all throughout biology. A lot of this you're first introduced to in general biology or just introductory biology. And you'll see it in genetics, in cell bio, and then even down to biochemistry. And I find that this is a topic that is confusing to a lot of students. And it's basically all the C words in genetics. And there's a lot of them. And they all refer to sometimes very similar things, but there are nuances, very small details that we forget. And to really understand some of this, you need to know a little bit of the basics of the cell cycle. Um, remember that there's two major phases of the cell cycle. Okay? There's interphase, which is where most cells spend most of their life. And then, of course, in mitosis or meiosis. And this is where the cell is actually dividing. Okay. This is actually where the cell spends a very minor portion of its life, very small percentage, but most of it's an interface. Now, the first term I'm going to define is probably the one that everyone hears the most, and it's chromosome. Okay. It's not chromosome with an O-N-E at the end. It's chromosome with an O-M-E. A chromosome just refers to any DNA molecule. Okay. If it's a DNA molecule, it's a chromosome. To understand how this term chromosome kind of fits in with these other terms for DNA molecules, let's use an analogy of a folding chair or a fold-out chair. Now, if you have a fold-out chair, you, everyone's probably seen one or used one at some point, it can really exist in two conformations or what we'll call a topology, okay? that is a shape. You can either fold it up, which basically makes it easy to store, right? Or you could unfold it, and that allows you to sit in it, right? And you can, in your mind, hopefully see the difference between those two shapes of the chair. Now, those are two different shapes of the chair, but does it erase the fact that they're both still the same chair? Right, they're both chairs, right? It doesn't matter what shape that chair is in. It's still a chair. However, that chair can have multiple shapes, okay? So in this context, a chromosome just refers to any DNA molecule. It does not matter what shape that DNA molecule is in. So if it's a DNA molecule, it is a chromosome. Okay? Notice over here we have this unwound DNA molecule. Okay? Um, I don't actually have this term in here for some reason, but this unwound DNA molecule has a specific term. It's chromatin. Okay? Is this a chromosome? Yes. But the specific shape that the chromosome is in, meaning unwound, makes it chromatin. So this is kind of one of those situations where all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares, right? So all chromatin is a chromosome. So chromosome is just any DNA molecule irrespective of the shape. But not all chromosomes are chromatin because some of the chromosomes can be condensed or wound up. So if the DNA molecule, if the chromosome is unwound, it gets a slightly more specific term, which means chromatin. And that's what we see the DNA in this shape in most of the cell's life, which is an interface. Now, let's suppose that we're a cell and we want to divide and undergo mitosis. We know what has to happen is that chromosome has to condense up, and it forms this structure right here. This is called a chromatid. So a chromatid is simply a condensed DNA molecule that we see during cell division or mitosis. So is the chromatid a chromosome? Yes. A chromosome is any DNA molecule regardless of shape. But is every chromosome a chromatid? No. Because some of the chromosomes are in a chromatin form, some of the chromosomes are in chromatid form. So, chromosome, very general term. It is any DNA molecule. The chromatin refers to the form of the chromosome when it's unwound during interphase. Chromatid refers to the form of the chromosome when it's condensed during mitosis or meiosis. Okay? So I can refer to either of these as a chromosome, because a chromosome is just a DNA molecule. This one is specifically chromatin. This one is specifically a chromatid. All right? Now, Let's talk about these terms, sister chromatids, or homologous chromosomes. Now, we're going to kind of do this in the context of humans. Humans have 46 total chromosomes, so they have 23 pairs of chromosomes. In other words, every human somatic cell has two chromosome ones. 
two chromosome twos, has two chromosome threes, and so on and so forth. So if we look at homologous chromosomes, that's any pair of corresponding DNA molecules. Okay, So when I say a homologous chromosome, remember what a chromosome is. It's any DNA molecule. It doesn't matter what the shape is. So let's say this chromatin right here is DNA molecule number five. It's chromosome number five. Okay, There's two of these, and they're homologous chromosomes, but they just happen to be in the chromatin form. Maybe over here, this is still chromosome number five. They're in the chromatid form, but they're still homologous chromosomes. Okay? Now, the term homologous chromosome, this is important, chromosome. Remember, chromosome, the term, doesn't matter what the shape is. So it wouldn't matter if those two chromosomes, let's say it's chromosome number five. There's two chromosome number fives, right? It wouldn't matter if chromosome number five was in the chromatin form or the chromatid form. It does not matter when you use this term homologous chromosomes because it's two of that chromosome. Doesn't matter what the shape is. We know that because it says chromosome. Doesn't matter the shape. It just refers to the fact that there's two of every chromosome in a healthy individual. Now, sister chromatids. Sister chromatids does not refer to at any point of interface. Because remember, what is a chromatid? Chromatid is only observed during cell division. So if we're looking at sister chromatids, this is a pair of condensed corresponding DNA molecules of homologous chromosomes. So this term is only used during mitosis or meiosis. Remember, this is one chromatid. And let's, for our example, assume it's chromosome 5. So this is one sister chromatid of chromosome 5. The other sister chromatid is right here, right? Remember, there's two of every one of them. But chromatid only refers to when we're in mitosis and the DNA molecules wound up. They are still chromosomes, but in mitosis specifically, they are chromatids because they're condensed and wound up. And because these are the same chromosome, they're both number five, they are homologous chromosomes. And because they are the same chromosome, they're both number five, they are sister chromatids. Okay. Now, what is the centromere? Okay. If we look at these two sister chromatids, and again, this is only something observed during mitosis, these sister chromatids are going to pair up and they form this kind of X structure. Um, we, of course, see this during metaphase of mitosis. Right? The point where these chromatids, these sister chromatids are paired, that point is called the centromere, another C word. So the centromere is just where the two sister chromatids pair. And it's going to occur right here where my mouse is on this one, and right here where my mouse is on that one. Again, the centromere only happens during mitosis or meiosis. You will never refer to a centromere during interphase when it's in the chromatin form. Okay? They have to be wound up and in the chromatid form. Now, chiasmata. This is where two chromatids cross over during meiosis. So this is not something we see during mitosis at all. Okay. We still see a centromere during meiosis, but remember during meiosis, this is where we actually have exchange of genetic information between the two sister chromatids. So once they actually uh, pair up like this, um, they'll exchange genetic information between their two arms. Okay. And the point where that crossing over occurs and they exchange gen genetic information, that is termed the chiasmata. These two right here, they have to do with the cell and genetics, but they don't have anything to do with the DNA molecules directly. Okay? We have what's called a centrosome and centrioles. These are often confused as well and misused in uh, writing and so forth. So what is a centrosome? A centrosome still produces microtubules. However, a centrosome is composed of two centrioles. So oftentimes you'll see something that looks like this in a textbook. When you're referring to both of them collectively, because they always come in pairs, when you're referring to both of these collectively at the same time, it's a centrosome. Okay? The centrosome is also called the microtubule organizing center, and there are two of them. Okay? This whole thing makes up a centrosome. Okay? Also notice that these centrosomes produce microtubules, which of course go and connect to the centromeres of 
the chromatids when they are paired up. Okay? This is something that, of course, occurs during metaphase of mitosis, and meiosis for that matter. Okay? But the point is, the centrosome is both of these collectively. So what is a centriole? The centriole is just one of them. Okay? So if I was just referring to this one right here, this one would be a centriole. This one up here, if I'm referring to this one by itself, this is one centriole. That means that a centrosome, this whole thing, is composed of two centrioles. In other words, the centrosome is more plural. It refers to both of them at the same time. The centriole is one of them by itself. Okay? So, hopefully this video, even though we didn't go into much of the processes here, hopefully it gave you a good understanding of the terms and when they are used. A lot of the terms that refer to DNA, it just differs what phase of the cell cycle you're in. If you're in interphase, it's chromatin. But if it's at any point during cell division, it's a chromatid. Okay? And so the chromatids are condensed and wound up. The chromatin is unwound. Right? But remember, when you see the term chromosome, that is just a molecule of DNA. Does not matter what the shape of it is, the topology does not matter. Any DNA molecule is a chromosome. Okay? Hopefully this video made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.